back to the channel. Now, if you are regular followers of the channel, you'll know that uh, a few weeks ago I turned the other half of this big burl. It was, uh, I was I had an embargo on me from turning or doing anything with it because my wife thought it looked like Santa Claus because uh, it had this great big kind of like a beard shape down the bottom. But eventually she gave me permission and I have since made a bowl from that area there. So anyway, now it's time to try and do something with the rest of it. Now this piece uh, has a few more issues than the first piece and the first one had certainly had its fair share, but we've got a big crack on here. And also if we turn it over, we've got a few bark inclusions coming in there, there, and there. So we've got to try and pick an area where we feel we have the best chance of making a bowl from. We've also got a, a kind of a pith area there, which is where that crack comes from on the other side. So with my pen, I think our best chance of getting something nice is kind of like in this area here. So I'm gonna go and get out some cutting implements, trim off these areas and then we'll get it mounted up. I think I'm gonna use a faceplate in there somewhere and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, that's done pretty well. We've got a nice, good sized blank to try and start turning. And we are gonna use a, a faceplate on this side to mount it. Now, when we first turned this piece, it was very, very hard to tell exactly what wood it was because it was pure burl. Fairly sure it was elm, but you can never be quite 100% certain. Now I did see a bit of grain around here from the cutoff there. And that does look like elm. But again, hopefully as we get this turned down, we might be able to get a better identification of exactly what this is. So anyway, face plate on, onto the lathe, and we'll start. Right, okay, we're all set up. Uh, if you saw the first one of this, then you'll realize that it is gonna be quite a dusty experience. So I am gonna be wearing a mask throughout this turning, especially in the early stages, because the amount of dust that came off this first one was absolutely uh, horrendous. So I'm gonna be wearing this the whole time, as well as a face mask. And periodically, if it gets too bad, I'll be putting on the extraction as well. So we're a little bit out of balance at the start, uh, so we'll be turning at 600 RPM. I've sharpened up, so I'll get my face mask on and we shall start. take stock. This certainly has some character, I'll give it that. <laughs> wow. Right, I'm going to take a couple of seconds to try and remove a lot of this bark inclusions to see how safe this is to continue to turn or what we have to do to make this safe to continue to turn. Because yes it's got beautiful character but Safety always has to come first. Right, well, the prognosis isn't good. We've got deep crevice in there, which heads into here and then up out this side. That really was quite a bark inclusion. Uh, I could go to keep on going down, but I wouldn't reach enough material to be able to make a tenon out of until we're virtually at the face plate. So 
in terms of finishing it as a natural bowl, it's an absolute no-go. So the only chance that this bowl has of not becoming firewood is with resin. So do I want to resin it? Well, I do, but should I? It's an awful lot of resin. We'll give it a go. We don't start these things to quit, generally. <laughs> I wish I had sometimes. Right, I'm gonna go and order up some resin, and I'll bring you back when it either comes to my senses or the resin's arrived. Right, I'll see you soon. Okay, I've got some resin, so we're gonna mix this up and get it set. Uh, I took off the top of the bowl, just I wanted to make sure that there's nothing else nasty underneath there. So that's been all sorted out. I took out a few more bark inclusions that I found, and I've just coated the insides here with a bit of PVA glue. It'll help the resin uh, attach to it easier and not soak into it too much, hopefully. Right, what I intend to do is I'm gonna set it in this bucket, but rather than just put it straight in, I'm gonna line it with a bin liner so I can kind of fold it over a little bit so we're not gonna hopefully waste too much resin. Right, okay, so we're gonna get mixed up. I have coated uh, these scales with cling film because these are my wife's scales and if I hand them back covered in resin, then yeah, you can only imagine what will happen. Right, we're going to be using Epidex a deep pour resin. Uh, I found these online. There seems to be some good reports from it. I did try contacting the company, but they never replied, so we're going to give it a go anyway. It's a two to one ratio done by weight. So one part, sorry, two parts of this stuff and then one part of the hardener. Okay. Oh, blimey. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Right, if you ever tell your friends about this channel, please don't tell them about that bit. Now we shall mix these in. All right, let's put some colour in. Now, don't shoot me, but I'm going with like a pearlescent finish. If you would choose something different, then please let me know in the comments below. I've never been excellent at uh, choosing colours for resins. But this is what I've chosen, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, right, I'll let those sit for a second or two while I just get a little bit cleaned up here and start getting ready for the pour. Okay, the ball bank's nicely encased in black bin liner and inside the bin. So the chances of leaks are minimal. Okay, here goes nothing. Now, as you can see, that's not filled up the hole. Now, this is where the uh, the blag comes into use because when I fold it in and kind of tie it there, it'll push in from the sides to form more of the shape of the actual bowl itself, thus 
bringing the level up. And hopefully, <laughs> it'll all be good. Right, say goodbye. I have no idea if that's worked. I don't blame it. Right. Right, I'm going to tie this off, but I am going to check it in a couple of days and see if I need to add any more. Yeah. Easy. Right, we'll give this a few days. Or 24 hours, and I'll take another look at it and decide if I, if I need a bit more, I'll put a bit more in. The colour matching is going to be relatively straightforward, so that's not a problem. Well, that went well. Smooth as silk. Okay, this has had a good while to set. I did have to add some more resin to it. Uh, unfortunately, I only figured out the best thing to do after the fact, after I'd added more resin. And I'd put uh, like a bit of hose or a bit of pipe insulation a tube down the sides, which helped force it in from the edges where it didn't want the extra resin. So I'll remember that for next time. Right, so let's see if this one. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. Right, let's take this out. There's a bit of leakage. That might come over the edges. I don't think this will come off. Oh, it will. <laughs> That's the ugliest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Right, well, we're here now. Where did you start? Right, I think we're gonna put a, a face plate back on this side so we can start turning away and trying to find the bowl in here. Right, get some lathe. Okay, when I was putting resin in this, I've got an awful lot of spare resin at the top here. So I'm just out of curiosity, going to just tidy up this little bit and see if it's possible to part it off and reuse this bit of resin somewhere else. I'm not sure if it's gonna be possible, but I'll just spend a couple of minutes trying to clear this black plastic off, get a resemblance of a shape and just see what we've got at the bottom. And if I can save it, I will, because I which prefer to as opposed to just turning it all away. Right, I'm going to bring up the tailstock support because I think I might need a bit of assistance on this. Okay. Starting off with the carbide. Won't be turning too quickly at the start. I'll just try and see if we can clean this up a bit. One word that springs to mind is ow. Some of these shards coming off were, even with a glove on, that hurt. Oh, there's wood anyway. That's always a good sign. Jeez. It's like a bad Halloween costume. All right, I've got a bit further to go to try and get rid of this.
Yeah, it's starting to clean up nicely. Still got some black in here. And if I was to save any of this plastic, I would take a cut directly across there. But, looking at it, do you think we could have a nice, turn it into a feature, have a nice kind of white foot on this? Could be interesting. All right, let's give that a go while it's here. Stuff. If you don't get your, your tool at the right angle, it just absolutely obliterates it. I'm not keen on this EPIDEX stuff at all. When it's cutting fine, there's no problem at all, but when just at the wrong angle, you get covered with these well, almost glass fragments. executive decision to get rid of this. I am absolutely fed up with the uh, this just shattering on me so I'm just gonna go into it and get rid of that. cleared that I'll start to shake the bottom I'll put a foot on it I think I'm not going to go with a tenon or a recess I think I'm going to go with a glue block to hold this when I turn this round I shall start sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it, but I shall bring you back when we're done. <laughs> ah, I'm glad that's over. Okay, right, we're going to put on a shark sealer and then we're going to go on with two grades of abrasive paste and then we can get the glue block on and turn this round. No, we can't because then we've got to put a finish on it. Then we'll put a glue block on, then we'll turn it around. Okay, I'm just going to put this shellac sealer on with a brush just so I can get in all the, the nooks and crannies in this wood. But the shellac sealer will certainly help to bring out the, well, as you can see, it brings out the beauty in this wood, which I am glad to say I'm pretty sure is elm. If you look at the grain round here, and the colour of it, I don't think there's any doubt as to what kind of wood it is. I'll let this soak in for a while, and then we'll put the abrasive paste on. Okay, that's had a good while to dry off. Now I'm going to go on first of all with the normal abrasive paste. When that's done, we're going to go on 
uh, with the bit of isopropyl and blow out all the holes to make sure all the particles are out. And then we'll go on with a super fine. It should really help to polish the resin. Right, this is the uh, Truger Ultrafine, which has just been released. So uh, I was pretty pleased with that because the other one's pretty good. Let's see what this one's like. Go blow it out the grooves, out the burls. But wow, it's so smooth. Okay, I spent a good long while making sure that all the the burls and wormholes were clear of any of the uh, the abrasive grit we used. It took a while, but uh, it's certainly worthwhile making the effort to do such things. Right, for the finish, I'm gonna use a, like a shine juice, which is a shellac mix with raw linseed oil. I'll put it on with a paper towel. And we can buff this in. We don't have to wait for it to dry. I'm just going to give it another coat before we put the glue back on. Right, I'll put another coat on now and then I'll bring you back in a second when I'm shoving the glue back on. Okay, we're all ready for putting the waste block on. This is just a little oak blank which I've had for ages and not done anything with it, so it's fine to be sacrificed. Uh, I've never really used a glue block before so I'm going to do what I feel is best. Put some glue on here, squidge it on, bring up the tailstock to a hole I've got at the bottom, apply a bit of pressure and leave it for a little while. Sounds fair enough to me. <laughs> Many things can go wrong but hopefully we'll be all right. Give it a good spread around make sure there's plenty of surface area adhesion. Missed a bit, missed. Right, clamp, a bit of pressure. I'll let that go off. Okay, we're all set up. This glue block seems pretty well on there. I didn't turn a tenon previously because I wanted the block and the tenon to be square with the bowl. So I'm just gonna square up the edges, mark out for a tenon, and then turn it in here. It's gonna be a good test as well of the uh, of how secure this is. Turn around. Pretty good. Right, I'm going to go back in with the carbide, the normal round carbide, to even up this surface, and then we're nearly ready for sanding. Still a bit more to do on this edge. Still some resin there we've got to get rid of. But we're nearly there. We are nearly there.
Right, that'll do it. Okay. Sanding time. Now, I've just broken my uh, compressor, and that's essential to get these bits blown out, so that's arriving tomorrow, so we'll carry on with this sanding tomorrow. Okay, new compressor is installed, and it is so quiet. Not silent, but uh, so much quieter than the last one. So we can finish this bowl at last. Sanding done. Right, I'll be on with the isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean up the dust of the surface and then on with the shellac sealer. Give that a couple of seconds to dry. Well, an hour or so to dry. Okay, so as before, we're gonna go on with the abrasive paste and then on with a, a super fine, making sure that we clean out residue in between. Let that evaporate and then we'll go on with the super fine. Okay, on with the super fine. Right, I'm going to really take my time now to blow out all of these holes whilst wiping with isopropyl and I'll bring you back when it's all done. One thing I forgot to mention earlier on, when you're applying the abrasive paste, and certainly when you're blowing it out with a, an air hose, then eye protection is essential. Right, we're just gonna apply the, the same finish as before, which is the, uh, the raw linseed oil and shellac mix, commonly known as uh, shine juice. apply a second coat of this and then I'll bring you back just taking this off okay I'm going to part this off about there I'm going to do it more carefully than I have done anything in my entire life Heart's still beating. I'm going to uh, <laughs> saw off the rest. Okay, we're on the uh, back on the cold jaws. So very, very carefully, very, very slowly, I'll just take this away. say just short of three weeks work to see disappear in front of your eyes like that is uh, it's a bit of a shock and I'm still not quite over it my heart's still pounding away but luckily it's in one piece I finished it off by hand <laughs> I didn't dare put it back on that uh, in the cold jaws. Not quite sure what happened there. 
it may be the weight of the piece because it is a reasonable sized burl. There's a lot of density in here. But I'm so happy the way it's come out. It wasn't what I set out to do. I had no intentions of putting resin in it. It was only when we started to find all those bark inclusions that uh, it became necessary or just turn it into firewood. And when you've got wood as beautiful as this, turning it into firewood is just, it would just be an awful thing to do. So we've got one little battle scar from where it came off, just there. I could send that back, but look at it. It's got so many battle scars. I think it, one more isn't going to make any difference whatsoever. It really is just so utterly gorgeous. I'm pretty sure this is elm. Looking at the the wood grain, I don't think there's any doubt that it is elm. Ah, oh, what a process. What an ending. <laughs> I can't take too many of them. Right, anyway, let's wrap this up. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like, subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, please do so. And if you do leave a comment and you are a subscriber, then you're going to be entered into the giveaway when we get to a thousand, sorry, not a thousand, cracky, that was years ago. Uh, when we get to the 1st of June, the next giveaway is on the 1st of June. Right, but apart from that, thank you very much indeed for joining me on this journey. I'm going to go for a lie down and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.